We begin on page 543 with the seasonal greeting here at the top. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. In this manner, the whole congregation was put in the mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need that all Christians continually have to renew the, our repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. And to make a right beginning, let us now pray for grace that we may faithfully keep this lens. I invite us all to kneel. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make an awesome new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lesson. Our Old Testament lesson is a reading from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness there is spread upon the mountains a great and powerful people. Their like has never been before, nor will be again after them through the years of all generations. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 103. Psalm 103 will be said responsively by whole verse. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and praise that it, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sin and heals all your infirmities? Who saves your life from death and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness? 
who satisfies you with good things, renewing your youth like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all those who are oppressed with wrong. He showed his ways to Moses, his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and great goodness. He will not always chide us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He is not For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy also toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father pities his own children, so is the Lord merciful to those who fear him. For he knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. The days of man are as grass. He flourishes as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever, and ever upon those who fear him, and his righteousness upon children's children. Even upon those who keep his covenant, <clears throat> and think upon his commandments to do them. The Lord has prepared his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. O oh, praise the Lord, you O oh, praise the Lord, all you his host, you servants of his that do his pleasure. O oh, speak good of the Lord, all you works of his, in all the places of his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh, my soul. Our epistle reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, through chapter 6, verse 10. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time I listen to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we lived, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our gospel. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus taught, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people. <clears throat> In order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward." 
But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please join with me in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Convict us of our sins, our need for Jesus as our Savior. But sustain us, knowing that through Christ we are saved and redeemed. And therefore, help us to do what you call us to do in mission, to share the good news of Jesus, to love others in his name, to seek to proclaim his kingdom to the lost world. Strengthen our walk and our witness, O Lord. Help us to see, receive grace as we give grace. Help us to love as you love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the 40 days of the Lenten season. And during the Lenten season, we have several extra worship services, if you will. And I tend to repeat myself saying, you don't really need very intricate sermons by me, because if you do, if you come to the services, if you listen to the liturgy, if you listen to the readings and observe them, you will be doing what is right. And so my task really is to sort of cheer you on, to coach you, if you will, in the right frame of mind as we enter into this Lenten season. And if you, re if you notice the, the sort of invitation that I gave you right at the beginning of the service on page 544 is you're invited to observe a Holy Lent by doing what? Self-examination, repentance, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and reading and meditating on God's holy word. If you do these things, you are doing well. So again, I don't need to admonish you to do them. The, the prayer book and the liturgy is doing that already. So what can I add? What can I say to encourage you to keep a holy Lent? Let me, let me notice, first of all, something that you may have picked up on the gospel reading today. If we're not careful, it calls us out, doesn't it? What do we do tonight? What are you invited to do tonight? You're invited to come forward and to receive ashes on your forehead. If you will, a disfiguration of your forehead. And by the way, Ash Wednesday is a real fast day in the Anglican Church and the other, other parts of, the, uh, of, of Christianity. It's a fast day. We're really supposed to fast on this day as well as on Good Friday and every Friday in Lent. So here we are invited to disfigure our faces, to go into fasting, and yet the gospel says, do these things in secret. Otherwise, we'll be like hypocrites. And I think the first thing I want to point out is how this is a challenge to make sure we're oriented right in what we do and what we say and what we believe. For instance, Father Mike Schmidt, who I greatly admire, he talks about the ashes that we'll be putting on your forehead if you desire. He says, and I'd like you to think about this, because if you decide to not wipe them off after the service and actually go out like we are going to a seafood restaurant, um, someone might say, hey, buddy, you got this smudge, this something on your face, right? Here's something to say. Here's something to take to heart. 
The ashes mean that I am a sinner. But the cross means I have a Savior. Think about that. That's, that really summarizes in many ways is Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is that self-examination. The whole period of Lent is self-examination to realize that we need a Savior. Now, I want to echo the words of our Bishop Chip. He sent out an, an email um, <clears throat> And one of those a post on, on Facebook and the like and on the diocesan website talking about Lent and particularly talking about Ash Wednesday. And one of the things he reminded us is that Ash Wednesday is not about self-improvement. Now, often, that's exactly what we turn it into. Uh, okay, it's Lent, so I'm, you know, hey, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going I'm to give up sugar. I'm going to give up sweets. I'm going to give up tobacco. I'm going to give up all of these things that I might like. I'm going to give all these things up. It's all about what I give up. And then I can go around telling people, this is what I've given up. Aren't I good? And as soon as Easter arrives, give me the box of chocolates, right? (coughs) Give me the pack of cigarettes. I don't even smoke, but by then I'm ready for one, right? So my point is, Lent is not about us giving up things, and it's not about us. Here's here's where we fit into the equation. Lent is about our need for a Savior, our brokenness, our sinfulness, how we need help, how we need Jesus. And so that's what it's really about for us. Yes, we may practice almsgiving. We may practice self-denial. But in doing so, it's not to get applause and recognition. If I save money by not going to Starbucks... That money I save, if I put in a mite box, I give to the poor, good. I'm doing something. I'm, I'm, I'm re, realigning my wallet with my beliefs. And, you know, what Jesus did, Jesus, who is God incarnate, right, the second person of the Trinity, he humbled himself. He had all of the rights of God. Still has them, of course. He has all of the rights of God, yet he humbles himself to be born as a human being, to be placed in a food trough, a manger is a food trough, and to, to be raised amongst his tribe, if you will, who and his family who originally love him and accept him, and then what do they do? Even his family, you know, they knock and they say, we've come to get him, he's out of his mind. Even his family turns against him for a while. And his own people, you know what happens on Palm Sunday, Right? Hosanna in the highest. The the palms are given in exchange, you know, they lay out the green carpet for him and then within a very short number of hours, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Ash Wednesday and the Lenten season is a season to examine ourselves and how we need Jesus. But it's not a time of misery. It really isn't. Because... In this time of self-examination, we're always reminded, no matter how far we've gone, how now, no matter how far we go, nothing separates us from the love of God. Jesus died for the sinner. You'll be hearing that in the comfortable words in just a few minutes. Jesus died for you, for me, and for this lost and broken and sorrowful world. The hypocrisy is real, though, and we have to own that. I don't know if you've been watching the news, you've been following, you know, President Putin in Russia recently had a big, uh, big forum where he was making announcements about things going on in his country. And of course, let's, let's examine President Putin for a moment. He's a Christian. He's an Orthodox Christian. And sitting on the first row of that great big meeting hall was Kirill. The, arch, the, the Metropolitan Archbishop of all of Russia, the church. Now, it's easy to pick on Putin right now because he's, he makes himself a good target. But here's the reality. All of us sin. From clergy all the way, from, from, from priest all the way to bishop and archbishop. The reality is, is we're all sinners. We're all hypocrites. We're all sinners of Christ redeeming. And so this is not a time where I can start feeling good about myself because I'm keeping a better Lent than the other guy. This is a time when we realize we're all on the Titanic and the ship is sunk 
But there is one who reaches out from the lifeboat and says, come join me. And he reaches from the hard wood of the cross and says, come, let me save you. Our sins are never greater than God's grace. But it is foolishness to practice openly sin and say, God's grace has me covered. That's disillusion. That's, that's being, that's completely disconnected from reality. Grace is God's mercy. We are still called to repentance, amendment of life, and the encouragement as we move forward on this pilgrimage to God's heavenly country. So my friends, I do invite you to the observance of a holy Lent. Don't worry about whether or not you've given up French fries and you, well, today, you know, it's it's Ash Wednesday, so we decided to eat fish. Let me show you how temptation works on Michael. We go to McDonald's because a filet fish by definition, is a Lenten observance. Would you agree with me? Gene agrees with me, right? <laughs> okay. So we decided to have a filet fish Debbie likes hers plain. So we put plain on the little order. And sure enough, it comes out. Mine's all, you know, the, the tartar sauce, the cheese. That's the bait for the fish. And the fish. And Debbie's came out with a tartar sauce with on top of it no tartar sauce. So we pointed that out to the person who was kind enough to bring it out to us. And she said, oh, no problem. We'll get it for you. And then we had this extra fish sandwich, which in the middle of fasting, I thought, good for me. I get two. And I did. And afterwards, I felt convicted. I'm like, you know, something. there's a disconnect here. I'm fasting and I'm having two filet fish sandwiches when I really should have had one. That's how easy it is to fall. But God's grace is so much bigger than our filet of fish failures. Amen? Amen. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. Almighty God, you have created us. I'm on page 545. Almighty God, you have created us from dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a symbol of our mortality and a sign of our penitence. That we may remember that it is by your grace alone that we receive the gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. I invite you to come forward for holy, excuse me, for the imposition of ashes. To do so, it's sort of like Holy Communion. Come forward from, wait Debbie, come forward from this side and fill up from here and receive ashes. And and because Debbie's going to be singing also, she's going to go ahead and join us. But otherwise, just come on forward, fill up the aisle, the, the, the altar rail. I'll anoint you with ashes. Now, grace abounds. If you go, I really don't want ashes on my forehead. I don't want that because I've had to wipe it off. Let me know and I'll be glad to pick it up and sprinkle it on your head. So you received ashes, but you don't have the mark. So you see how we, we God's grace abounds? I invite you forward.
I invite you to kneel as you are able. We will continue by the recitation of the penitential Psalm 51. Psalm 51. And we will pray the psalm together in unison. Have mercy upon me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the multitude of your mercies, wipe away my offenses. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in wickedness, and in sin my mother conceived me. For behold, you desire truth in my inward parts, and you shall make me understand wisdom secretly. You shall purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face from my sins, and blot out all my misdeeds. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a bright spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. O give me the comfort of your help again, and sustain me with your willing spirit. Then shall I teach your ways unto the wicked, and sinners shall return unto you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you desire no sacrifice, or else I would give it to you. But you delight not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you shall not despise. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have not have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy upon us. For all our unfaithfulness and disobedience, for pride, vanity, and hypocrisy of our lives, Lord, have mercy upon us. For our self-pity and impatience, and our envy of those we think more fortunate than ourselves, Lord, have mercy upon us. For our unrighteous anger, bitterness, and resentment, for all lies, gossip, and slander against our neighbors, Lord, have mercy upon us. For our sexual impurity, our exploitation of other people, and our failure to give of ourselves in love, Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have against you. For our self-indulgent appetites and ways, for our intemperate pursuit of worldly goods and comforts, Lord, have mercy upon us. For we have for our dishonesty in daily life and work, our ingratitude for your gifts, and our failure to heed your call, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, we have sinned against you. 
or our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Lord, have mercy upon us. For our wastefulness and misuse of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, Lord, have mercy upon us. For all false judgments, for prejudice, and contempt of others, and for all uncharitable faults toward our neighbors. Lord, have mercy upon us. For all negligence in prayer and worship, for our presumption and abuse of your means of grace. Lord, have mercy upon us. For seeking the praise of others rather than the approval of God. Lord, have mercy upon us. For our failure to commend the faith that is in us, Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray together. Show favor to your people, O Lord, who turn to you in weeping, fasting, and prayer. For you are a merciful God, full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in steadfast love. You spare when we deserve punishment, and in your wrath you remember mercy. Spare your people, good Lord, spare us. In the multitude of your mercies, look upon us and forgive us through the merits and mediation of your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and truly believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. When he the sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. I invite you as we stand and pass the peace. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. God's peace. Thank you, your servants. God's peace. Thank you, your servants. <coughs> our offertory hymn, excuse me, our offertory sentence, and then our hymn. Our offertory sentence comes from Matthew chapter 6, the gospel today. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Scott, what's our offertory hymn? 140. 140, please.
115, page 115 of your Book of Common Prayer with the Circe Court. 115. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, everywhere and always, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful <coughs> people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> He made there by his one oblation of himself, one sovereign, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts, the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire the fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy because of our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, Yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <laughs> To assist with communion, all are invited to come up for either a blessing, you're welcome to do that and not receive communion, but a blessing. If you would like to receive communion, we offer you two ways. The host in tink in the blessed wine, the blood of Christ, just let me know that you would like to tink. On the other hand, if you would like to receive the host and then receive the common cup, just let me know. That's what you would like to do. Please assist Jan as she leads the cup to your mouth. It's hard for her to see otherwise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the Continue. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ.
communion prayer is found on page 121. Just want to give you a heads up that there's another prayer afterwards, but I will give you a chance to get to it and so forth. I just want you to know it's coming. So page 121 is our post-communion prayer, and we pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us, that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. If you would now turn to page 551. Page 551. There's a prayer at the bottom of the page that we pray together. Page 551. Together let us pray. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart that desiring you, we may seek you, and that seeking you, we may find you, and that finding you, we may love you, and that loving you, we may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you. And remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And have a blessed night. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn 143.